Hey guys, welcome to Jackpot Decoded. My name is Comfort Gideon and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the step-by-step -step admission process for schools in the UK. And if this sounds like something you're interested in, do well to watch this video to the very end and subscribe to, to our channel for more content like this. So let's get started. So before we dive into um, the process of admission, of the schools in UK, right? The first things I need to pay attention to is the documents you will need to even apply for admissions into these institutions. So I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm going to be mentioning some of the documents right now for you to get them handy before you even set out to apply to these schools, right? So the very first document you will need for um, your admission process or application process is your passport. Your passport you know um that passport that some people call international passport right if you're in nigeria and it's without passport that you get from immigrations that has the green cover yeah a lot of people call it international passport but it's called passport yeah it's the document that shows your identity as a citizen of a particular nation so that's the very first thing you need to apply the second thing you need is um a result that shows that you studied in english and in most cases this is your wife resort if you are a Nigerian or if you are from Africa a wife resort is accepted in the UK and some schools will require you to write some English exams like TOEFL like IELTS and all of that but usually on a general note wife resort is usually accepted the next thing you will need is your degree certificate and if you studied in let's say um, polytechnic your HND some schools accept HND but usually your degree certificate BSc BTEC and all of that you need to get that handy the next document you need is your transcript your transcript is like a statement of your results that shows the courses you offered in the university and the grades you had in each of those courses yeah you usually need your transcript handy and um, if you've not gotten it already and you are planning or thinking of applying to study in the uk you should start making arrangement already on how to get your transcript some schools will usually mail them to you while others will send them to the schools where you're applying to so you need to make arrangement for that as soon as possible the next document you will need is um a statement of purpose or um your personal statements we call it sop yeah your statement of purpose this is a document a written document from you that shows okay this is the course i want to study why you want to study this particular course and then why are you planning to study this course in this particular institution like why did you choose to study this course in our uh, school instead of all the other courses in the uk you need to like give your reasons this is what is called the personal state the next document you will need is your cv yeah your written cv that shows some details about you and all of that your um, qualifications your experiences and things you've been doing they want to say that so they need your cv also for your application then the next document you will need to apply to study in the UK is um, reference letters. Yeah, usually there are basically two reference letters that are required. One is your um, academic reference, which is like a reference that you get from your school. It can be from a lecturer in your school or your HOD, your um, faculty. Yeah, you just need to get a letter from your school. Someone from your school that can attest the fact that you really, you truly studied in this school and why you were studying, you were of good behavior and all of that. And then the second reference would be your work reference. If you if, if, if you said you've been working or you've worked in a particular organization, you need to get a reference from that organization of someone attesting that you actually worked in this organization within a total period of time and then you were of good behavior during the period of your stay or of your work in the organization. Yeah, so those are the documents you need to apply to study in the UK. Now let's dive into the main process of application into schools in the UK. The very first thing you need to do, right, if you are deciding or planning to study in the UK or planning to apply to study in the UK is to decide on the course you would want to study. There are some people that want to um, do like an advanced program of what they did in their undergraduate, right? 
but there are other people that, that plan to like change they feel like they were not given the option to choose when they did their undergraduate so now is the time you can actually you can actually um make another choice so decide on the course you want to study then after you've decided on the course to study the very next thing you need to do is to go on the internet and browse for schools in the uk that offer that particular course that you decided you want to study there are several of them you see several of them so research check their website go to the school website and research what are the course requirements in the various schools what do they require how much is their tuition and all of that before you finally make your choice then when you've gotten a school that offers that particular course and you are okay with the tuition you're okay with everything with the course modules and all of that then you now need to apply you click on the application from their website you click on the apply button from their website for that course and then enter all the details and submit all the, the documents they'll ask you to submit and that's all once your application is successful you will then need to just sit down and wait for them to get back to you on the state of your application this usually take at least from five working days to two working to ten working days to a month it very it varies depending on the school you've chosen right so but they'll get back to you and usually when they get back to you the next thing is for you to get an offer letter two things can happen some people get um most times get a conditional offer right some people get a conditional offer if you get a conditional offer it means that there are certain requirements they still need you to meet before you can get an unconditional offer if you get a conditional offer and they state the requirements you need to meet they will tell you the things you need to do and if you don't do them within the stipulated um period stated in your offer letter your admission or your offer can be revoked right so usually some offers that you'll be required to meet are things like um your english uh, results English requirements I told you that sc schools in the UK accept work result right but it doesn't mean that so long as you wrote English <laughs> you, you you wrote English in your work you can just automatically be admitted into schools in the UK no they require certain scores or grades from you some schools usually require like a minimum of c4 in english and so if you have anything above c4 like c5 or or, or f9 or something or d7 yes they will tell you to write another english exam like ex like tofu like ielts and all of that and they'll give you the requirement they need for you to get in all of those exams right for you to meet the require um the conditions of your offer another condition that could come with your offer letter could be that you should pay a deposit before you can be given an unconditional offer some schools will ask you to pay a two thousand pounds deposit some schools will tell you to pay a four thousand pounds deposit and some schools will even ask you to pay like 50 percent of your tuition as deposit before you can be given a an unconditional offer so you need to verify all of this information from the school website before you even apply right then another condition that can come with the um with your offer letter is to is to submit a proof of funds document the proof of funds document is usually like it's usually a living expenses that the ukvi require you to have for the period of your stay in the uk they will require you to have all the amount of money that you need to take care of yourself for a period of um of your study in the uk so usually they'll need you to show them that you have this money and you can take care of yourself in the uk before you even come so some schools will need you to show it to them as a as as part of um your requirements before you can even be given an unconditional offer because they don't want to waste their money on you when they don't when they are not sure that you can get a visa even if they give you a cast do you understand yeah so i usually need to leave these funds in your bank account for at least 28 days before you can print out the statement and present it to your school and also the ukvi so some schools usually require you to do this before they can confirm that they they are giving you an unconditional offer so once you've met all the requirements of your offer you'll be given an unconditional offer once you have an unconditional offer, the next thing is for you to get a CAS. The CAS is a confirmation of your acceptance to study. This means that the school is accepting that you are genuinely their student and they are willing to sponsor you for the period of your stay as a student in their institution. 
some schools will need you to apply for a cast once you meet you get an unconditional offer before you can get a cast where other schools once you meet their unconditional offer once you get their unconditional offer they'll send you a draft cast to go through it and check for mistakes if there are no mistakes and you confirm that your information are correct they'll send you your cast and once you get your cast that's like the major thing like <laughs> your should i say your journey is like um should i say 70 percent done because the next thing is for you to just apply for visa because as a student that's the major thing should i say that's the aside the money that's like the major thing you need to apply for visa when you get your cast then you can now apply for your visa so there you have it that's the step-by-step -step process on how to um get admission into the uk and come to the uk on the study visa route so if you have questions concerning any of the things i've mentioned in this video and you need clarity you need um, more um expansion you can ask in the comment section and i'll respond to all of your questions and then if you have videos that you want me to do for you, you can drop them in the comment section and i'll always do them for you so and if you've watched this video to this point and you've not subscribed to this channel what are you waiting for click on the subscription button below to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell to get notified the moment we post new content and do well to share this video with everyone that needs this information all right so until i come your way again i remain comfort gideon bye bye